Hey Tribe, welcome to the HGDC, HG Designs Crochet channel. Today is all about my blanket stack. I posted a picture of these on Instagram around Christmas time and I've had so many questions about them that I thought I would do a vlog for you. So, where to start? Well, I should start with the fact that these are from years and years of work. I started to crochet when I was 21, I think. Officially, seriously, when I was about 21, after my grandma taught me. And these blankets have then been made since then over that period of time. So the last seven or eight years of my life, really, I have been making blankets. Um, and these are the ones that I have kept for me. There's quite a few blankets that I have gifted, baby blankets, there's a few commission blankets that I've sold, um, but the majority of them are here. So how many have I got? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's two behind me, eight, nine, plus one I'm working on, ten. Ten blankets all in various stages of completion, um, more not completed than completed. So I'm going to start with just the order that they're in so that I can take them off the pile. Um, I'm going to move them out of the way so that I can show you properly. So let me just get myself comfy and we'll go through them. Okay, I'm back. There's so much more light now they've gone. I am going to show you them in... I was toying with the idea of doing them in the order that I made them. But I think I'm going to show you in similarities. So I'm going to do granny squares, then my granny stripes, then my stripes and chevrons. And yeah, let's get started. This is one of... I think this is the first full blanket that I ever started to attempt to make. I think, looking back at my personal Instagram, I started this blanket in 2012, and no, it isn't completed. Um, this blanket is beautiful. It's absolutely fluffy. It's got Darcy hair on it. He uses it more than I do disclaimer um and as I'll go on to say I stopped because navy is not good with dog hair it's one of the reasons why I've never finished it so these squares were made out of just random DK acrylic that I would have got from local places nothing fancy um they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen rounds, just like my Just Because blanket actually. Fourteen rounds, including two rounds of navy. I then did a join as you go method um, where I have chained them together, which is not the best blanket to show you on because of the colour. Um, there are this blanket is huge. There's going to be lots of me standing up today. Um, you can see six squares there. Uh -huh. It's absolutely massive. And that's it folded in half. So it's huge. Absolutely huge. And the back, full of ends never been completed. Um, let me just count how many squares I've got so I can let you know. I've counted the squares, it's four by six, so it's 24 squares and they're 14 rounds each. That measures pretty damn wide. Um, I'll actually get a measuring tape now and tell you how wide a square is. Um, I made this blanket for my double bed, so I always did want it to be big, which is why I went for the larger square. So each square <laughs> is 
13 inches wide and centimeters for all of you that use that 35 centimeters oh so let me sit down and see not seeing with my body I think it's beautiful um as a first project it's entirely too big and it definitely has mistakes in that some of the joiners you go I didn't do enough chains in the corners um, and it's quite weak in places it does need washing but as I've not sewn the ends in I don't want them to felt so I'm a bit of a stalemate with it I'm tempted to rip back all of the navy and the border but that's painful because it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen fifteen rows deep which is almost six inches of border hmm I don't even want to think how long it took me to go around a blanket where each square is 13 inches let's add that up on my phone this blanket's absolutely huge 13 times 6 in length that's 78 inches that I have gone around 15 times and then just abandoned so comment below should I finish it should I just get rid of it I think if I was committed to it I could sit for an evening sew all the ends in an evening I'm lying to you over a weekend I could sew all the ends in finish off the bit of border that's trailing stick it in the wash and it be done so vote below does the giant granny square get finished or abandoned so that's blanket number one <coughs> excuse me that is a good um, a good six or seven years old it isn't the first ever ever blanket i made that's in pieces and i'm not going to show you that um uh, that one's even older, I think that one is about eight years old and I don't think I'll ever complete that one either. But that's partly because when I started making blankets they had to be huge um, and then I lost interest. Or I made a mistake but I made it on a large scale like not joining the corners properly. Um, yeah, so the next granny square I've got and the majority of my blankets are granny squares because my favourite thing to make is granny squares. I find it really relaxing, I find it really soothing and I can do them with my eyes closed. I will prove that, I will make a video. I can make them with my eyes closed um, and you can do them wherever you go. If you don't need to look you can make them in the cinema. So let's go on to the blanket that has the most sentimental value for me and that's my granddad's blanket so i made granddad a blanket when he went into a care home quite some years ago making made out of scraps and um, each square is a different color again just like the giant granny square blanket each square is a different color though colors are repeated no square is the same um I bordered it in black and it's quite an ugly blanket in all honesty. It's not my greatest work. But Grandad loved it and that was the main thing. So this blanket is it's a square because I've done nine squares, nine granny squares together, so it makes it a square. Um, and it is about as long as me. It's not on the scale of the giant granny square for myself that I made. Um, this one is very well loved and very well worn. They care home, put it in their commercial washers. Um, 
but it's actually really, really soft. You can see, let me hold it up close, that it's quite, this is a good square to show that it's, it's worn, it's very worn. Um, it's been through a commercial washer and dryer weekly for I don't know how long. So I'm actually amazed at how well it's held up and it does feel really soft. Um, because it's my granddad's blanket, I will always keep it. It was on my bed for quite a while um, and now I need some new blanket storage. I'm not sure where I'm going to keep it. But this blanket is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 rounds with two rounds of, no, one round of the black to join. So 17 round squares. Um, that has to be my biggest square I've ever made. Let me measure that for you. So they are just shy of 17 inches and I just used any scraps I could find for that. I kind of wish I'd made it a bit more pretty because now I've got it back. It doesn't really go with anything but I, any of my room's decoration. Um, the colours really do clash. But that's my most sentimental blanket. Um, I've got pictures of Grandad with it. It's also got a label on it with his name because some of the ladies kept stealing it. Um, so to make that one, you just need nine squares that are 17 rounds each, um, well, 16 rounds each, and then I joined in black, one round for each. And the border is just simply three rounds of granny stripe. Um, most of my blankets I use a 4 mil or a 4.5 or a 5. I generally use a 5 to be honest um, for all of my blankets. <coughs> Excuse me. The next granny square blanket I have shown before. This is the Lily blanket and I have had more requests for further information on this blanket. So this blanket I made I started making back in 2015, 2016, and it was originally going to be for my boyfriend at the time, but we split up and I put it away, but I wrote a note to myself telling myself where I was with it and what I needed to do. And I finished it, Christmas just gone, because it doesn't hurt no more. Um, so this was originally for a male, hence the colour choice. Um, it is wide enough for two people to snuggle under, that was the intention. Um, I've never put it on a bed so I'm not sure what it would look like on my king size. I think if you put a larger border it would just sit on the top of it. Um, so I have used granny squares again, my favourite go-to. These are Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten rounds. I used a four mil hook on this one, I can remember, and I would just count how many squares there are for you. This blanket has 35 squares and I've used 24 different colours, so there are a few repeats in here. Um, they are then joined together, join as you go, using um, my favourite method, join as you go using some grey and this is the Stylecraft in slate, no paint box in slate that I had left over from a blanket. Just one round of that, one round on the border and then a round of, um, if you're US they're single crochet, if you're UK they're double crochet. Just to finish, I didn't want anything too big or fancy, I just wanted it to put together um, so that it's actually a functioning blanket rather than some squares in a bag. So that's the Lily blanket. You want 35 squares, 10 rounds each. I used a four mil hook and you want 
I think I used about 300 to 400 grams to border this blanket um, and I used 24 different colours, it's all just DK um, and I think you would probably need about, I think 50 grams makes a square, maybe a little bit less, so you wouldn't need all that much and this was actually a really good stash buster. So that's the Lily blanket which if you've watched my all about the is it all about the crochet vlog you will know that I then went on to from this create the just because blanket which is supposed to be the girly version. I'm gonna have a big pile of blankets to tidy up after this. Okay still with me my next granny square um I should mention all of these blankets have memories and I can remember vividly where I was in life um, what I was doing, my circumstances when I made these blankets so that's quite a, it's quite a nice thing. My next granny square which I think will be the favourite. This is called Distraction. I started this blanket when I split up with my partner a couple of years ago. I started this in 2016, it's not finished, um, you'll hear that a lot, it's not finished. This is called distraction because it was a distraction from what was going on in my life, which I think a lot of people do with their crochet. Um, at the time we split up I was working on his blanket and I didn't want to work on that because it was painful and so I got all of my, all of my, a lot of my scrap or I've got like one ball of one colour in DK and I wanted to be able to make a blanket which is where this came from. So these squares are three round squares um, using a 3.5mm hook for that tighter um, granny square and these are joined as you go as you go along so rather than doing a border colour and joining I have joined the squares onto each other as they go along. Now this is a colour effect I'm going to stand up so you can see. Um, people have referred to it as my Elmo blanket, they've referred to it as ombre, Tetris, Lego. It, I started up here with the pinks and the reds and I joined in the random brickwork colour um, and then as I went along it grew, though it didn't grow rectangular, I would pick a colour and add and then I would go back and join in the gaps. Um, I actually really like this corner, the more moody blues. Um, if you follow my Instagram this is on a lot of my posts from years back. And this is the, can you see all the greys into the dark grey into the black? Um, and down here, the peach went into the browns which bled on. I think if I would do it again, I would make the squares bigger, so more rounds and I would, it was quite hard to plan out because I didn't know how many squares I would get from each colour um, but I would have tried to make it so that there was a few more of each colour if possible. I don't feel like there's much blue in here so that's what I would change, I'd put more blue um, and I'd do the ends as I go along, I messed up on that there's not that many left because I have spent a couple of days sat there sewing in all the ends. So all the front's done, but the back isn't. Now there isn't a pattern for the distraction blanket, but I will put up some pictures of it flatly at some point so that you could see how it is set out and maybe make your own. I just wanted to show you some colour pops. So there's this, that is actually neon, but it's not really showing up neon. Maybe if I get rid of my head, is that coming up? 
that is fluorescent neon lime green and then there's quite a lot of um, glitter pops so there's glitter pink there's glitter purple um, there's baby glitter pink and there's glitter grey silver there is a glitter navy somewhere mm -hmm. this side glitter navy i really like that um so there's glitter pops throughout the only thing i haven't got is a glitter green but i don't think there'll be one going in because i just need to finish off this end with the green and the black and this side with the yellow and the orange and then it's complete um will i border it i don't know because every color is included in it what can i border it in and i don't have enough of every color left to create a border with them all in um I don't feel like black would be a good choice. I don't think white's a good choice. I'm not entirely sure. If you've got any suggestions, comment below and let me know. That's another blanket on my list to try and finish this year, ideally. Um, my plan is, is to get some sort of blanket ladder so that I can have all of my blankets on display and out of the way of Darcy who makes a nest in them and yes I shouldn't leave them where I can get them but I like them to look pretty on my bed and then I come back and they're all like this and he's in the middle and then I chuck them on the floor like that when I'm done with them okay so that is all of my stripes that are uh, squares that are put together I have all of the squares for my Just Because blanket. I think I'm up to about, I'm not going to lie to you, I think there's around 20, 25 of those complete. And I've sewn the ends and I've gone, as I've gone along. I'm just waiting for an order so that I can carry on because I need some more of the candy floss pink in Stylecraft. Um, and then I have in this cupboard about two or three carrier bags of granny squares, three round granny squares, that were once upon a time put together and I called it my stain a glass or window blanket. And then I took it all apart because I had joined it together horribly and there was holes everywhere and I never sewed the ends together in on the squares and I didn't leave long enough tails and they were starting to unravel so I am, well, I, I've gone through and maybe redone about 20 of the squares and sewn the ends in and I have bags and bags of them. I'm considering taking them to Edinburgh Yarn Festival because I've got an 11 hour coach trip and if I take that as my only project, I will do it, but I'll hate it so that I can join them together and I'm rather than making a huge blanket, which I don't have the need for, I'm going to split it down into two or three blankets, join one in red, which I've got a lot of, um, and then see what else I want to join the rest in um, and make smaller blankets, which I find are more useful when people come round, they want a smaller blanket to be under, and in terms of storage, um, and it puts less stress on the squares when it's a smaller blanket, and I just don't use my big blankets though I will use just because because that is for my bedroom which I'm going to banish Darcy from okay so we can move on to stripes now um one of which I'm sat on and I think we're going to do granny stripes first because we've just done granny squares so in no particular order grabbing order this beauty this is a commission blanket that should be being picked up today. It is the, I've called it the Momadi blanket. This is using, this has been made solely in Stylecraft yarn. 
um, it is huge. It's bigger than my king size bed. I went a little bit over the top with it. There's a couple of ends to sew in before she gets here. So let me hold it up. Oh goodness. It's massive, it's too heavy to hold like that. Let me put it like this. It is gorgeous. The border is a granny stripe in the neutral and then it's called reverse stitch or crab stitch in the very pale colour. It's gorgeous. I really, really like it. It's not a colour palette Ooh, that I would normally work in. But in actual fact, I really like it and I would actually... I'm actually considering making a more neutral blanket for my lounge, which is more these colours. Um, I think it's come together really well. I have spoke about this blanket previously, so I'll keep it very brief. I used a 5 mil hook. Um, it's a 16, 16 row repeat. So a row will start there and it finishes... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I'll spot on there. That's an, that's an entire repeat. And we've got it in here. Let me work out how many repeats there are. So this is a 16 row repeat. And I've done six blocks of those 16 rows. And when I say 16 rows, uh, each colour is double. We are. So I've done 192 single rows on this blanket. Um, it's absolutely mega, absolutely mammoth. I will take the measurements and put them in my blog post for you. Um, it was, at first when it started and it was portable, I was really, really enjoying it because it could go where I could go. But as this started to go on, and get bigger and bigger and heavier it had to stay in the house which meant I had to stay in the house so in terms of a commission blanket I prefer to do squares because they're more portable they can go where I go and I just need to sit and join it together whereas this was many hours sat under this waiting to go out so that's the Mama D stripe blanket. Um, what else can I tell you about that? I think I've told you everything. Border, size, I'll put the measurements in the blog post for you. Um, I've already given the colour the colour names before. And I can quickly recap. I think that one was oatmeal, which I called porridge. Apple candy floss which I'm using for my just because blanket blue sky cream raspberry um you'll see that in a lot of my tutorials oatmeal um I think that's baby grey was it called slate apple cream oatmeal candy floss blue sky cream grey pink at raspberry and then continue uh, it's all style craft and they'll all be listed in my blog post should you want to get them so that's mama d's blanket style craft's really soft Oof, that's a big mess down there the next stripe hmm let's go with oh, this one which again, Darcy's had his bum on. Okay. Ignore the Darcy, the Darcy hair. This is my sunshine stripe. Um, I made this entirely out of yellow DK that I got from High Street Shops. Um, so I couldn't tell you the brand, but I'm sure you could easily match these from. Um, Stylecraft colours or whichever brand you prefer. 
it was this is my first ever granny stripe and I've bordered it in white and then I've done the shell pattern on the edging as the trim um, let me do a stand up on this one I think it's just such a cheerful colour So that's my sunshine granny stripe. Um, I really do enjoy doing a stripe and I really like that this is like an ombre effect. So it goes darker down to light, darker down to light. Um, and I made this back in 2013 before ombre was in fashion, FYI. <laughs> so that's another stripe. And you'll see that once I make a pattern once, I have to make it again in all of the colours. I'm sat on my next one. So whilst I'm stood up, let me show you this beauty. I absolutely love this one. It's one of my favourites. This is a scrap blanket using the granny stripe. And the method of putting this together is called um, the HGDC Scrap Board Challenge hashtag. And if you look on Instagram, you will find all of the people that have joined in and made their own version. So this blanket, I created my magic cakes and made a blanket, um, which isn't finished yet either. I started making this one back in June last year, 2017, whilst I went on holiday with my cousin. Um, and it was so nice because I had quite a lot of time and it grew really really quickly and this is just using a lot of the random one skeins that I've got which you can see still here towered I go into a shop I find yarn I buy one skein because I like the colour but then it's never really enough to do anything with and so by doing the scrap ball challenge all of that colour is then merged in so you can see the pink there and there um, it makes it very cohesive because the colours blended throughout. I am actually going to do a tutorial on how you do the scrap ball challenge and um, how you make your own yarn cakes. I just want to show this bit because I love the colour. The blues into the pinks. Um, so there will be tutorials coming of the scrap ball challenge and how you can make your own and join in. Um, I use Magic Knot to make up my own cakes. Um, I'll put some pictures in of some of the cakes I've made for you. And then I pick a pattern and go. I've seen people do corner to corner. Um, I've seen the triangle. I've seen, the, follow the hashtag, have a look. There are some great makes out there using this. And it's something that I want to get back into doing using that lot. I want to stash bush, stash bush, stash bust, get rid of a lot of the random one skein so I can get in what it is that I actually want. There's some really nice little blocks of colour in this. Certain repeats like this bit here. It looks so pretty. Um, this is going to be boarded solely in a bright pink and then I in terms of length I don't think I'm going to make it that much longer than what it is where does it come up to oh no I will so that is at my feet and it comes to sort of chest height and ideally I'll probably add maybe a third of the size onto it so an extra maybe another this amount border it and that will be done and that's a good size that's handy that I can take when I travel <coughs> and it's really beautiful and colourful um, I know this blanket's kept me company whilst I spent time in hospital visiting my cousin um, and it's just so tidy and neat. The smaller sizes are the way to go, people. So that's the HGDC scrap ball challenge. 
Um, I'm going to, I did do a blog post on it, but I am going to have a series of tutorials come through now to the channel to show you. You can just see my pile of blankets starting to creep up. Um, whilst we're on the subject of scrap board challenge blankets, I've got one more scrap board challenge blanket that I've made. Um, this is, Darcy's adopted this blanket and he gets more use out of it than me now. This is the first scrap board challenge blanket I made. Um, and this is before I magic knotted, so I would just knot the ends, um, which is not what I would do now if I was to make it again. So this is called Scraptastic. Um, this blanket is US single crochet, UK double crochet, striped. And again, I made the scrap yarn balls, the cakes, the HGDC scrap balls. And I striped and made this blanket. Um, I do love it, but it's not as put together as this one, but they both have their own merits. Um, You'd think just doing stripes, plain stripes, would be boring, but because the colours change so often, I was speeding along to see what would come through next. Um, it also holds quite a lot of memories because the colours in here were used in different blankets. So let me point out this multicoloured variegated one I made a cushion out of. Um, which never sees the light today, but I can remember making it. There's the neon pop that's in Distraction. Um, then, what other colours do I recognise? That brown I just couldn't get rid of. Um, I should have put more of it in Grandad's blanket rather than the bright pinks. So again, this is just a really good way to use up some of that yarn that you've got sat around that you don't know what to do with. Um, and some of the, the repeats are so cute and then it's got, I remember doing that red bit, I started this a couple of days after Christmas and I remember sat there making this bit and thinking the red was never going to stop. So there are some bigger chunks and then there's lots of smaller bits. Um, there's also Stellina, can you see Stellina? I can see the Darcy hair. There is Stellina in it, take my word for it. So that's another scrap board challenge blanket. <laughs> um, I've got two of those. I've got plans to make more with everything there. So make sure you subscribe so that when those videos come out you can see them. Um, and then that leaves two more blankets. Are you still with me? Are you still enjoying this? We're going to go with this one. This is my beautiful chevron. Um, I made this. Oh dear. I think I was about 20 when I made this. It was a good eight years ago maybe even nine years ago that I made this one. The yarn is just four colours repeated. Again, I really liked the ombre effect. Um, this, again, would have just been high street yarn. Um, I didn't used to buy it online. It would have just been from my local shops. Um, the chevron pattern is really fun to make and I'm gonna do a YouTube tutorial to show you how to do this pattern. Um, and then also I'll show you how to do the border. I did clusters of trebles and then I did um, UK double crochet, US single crochet in the reverse crab stitch. Um, quite a small blanket, but that's great in terms of travel because that can go with you. It's really light as opposed to, well, any one of those really that are hugely heavy. Um, 
it's like a single bed side, I guess. And I think that's really, really pretty. I really enjoyed making that one and I definitely would like to go back to doing more of the ombre looks. And my maths were perfect on that and the, and the edges are all perfectly straight, which is amazing. So there's one blanket left and that's this one. I'll show you why I'm stood up. This is my Lark's Foot blanket. Um, I will have shown you this in my last crochet vlog because I spent a couple of hours ripping out a huge chunk because my ends, rather than being quite square, which they are a little bit wonky, um, went off on it, on it. <laughs> So I haven't done it. Um, this blanket is the Lark's Foot pattern. Again, if you want a tutorial, just comment below and I'll show you how to make it. Um, I've got the cream with the orange cream, yellow cream, pink cream, green. Um, the green is actually a chunkier weight, but it, it goes quite well. You can't really tell. Um, again, this was just high street colours that I picked up, no brands of any type, um, or that I can remember should I say. The inspiration behind this blanket, I started this blanket in 2014 when I went back to uni to do my postgrad and it's highlighters. So you get a pack of four highlighters, um, orange, yellow, pink and green and I for two years solid went through packet after packet and everything, all my folders are colour coordinated and these were the colours that I lived. So there it is in a blanket. Um, I actually really like this one. I think it's really, really nice effect. I'd like to try and put that into a pair of socks. Um, and I just, I just think it's really pretty. It's quite striking, but very simple. So that is another one that I want to get finished. Um, I ripped back an absolutely huge chunk, which was about maybe this much. So I need to just go back through um, with and put that back. It'd be a good time to show you a tutorial of how to do the stitch. So if you want that, let me know. So <laughs> I kind of feel like I should show you that mess. That I've just created. Oh dear. All oh, the crochet. So that is the blanket stack vlog. Thank you for watching. Um, I will put all of the details that I've just told you in my blog post and I will link any tutorials that are already up and if you subscribe you'll see the new ones that are coming out. So happy making. I hope that's given you some inspiration. See you soon. Bye. Just as I'm moving them, I wanted you to see.